All right, what fanfic do we have today? See, so yeah, four flickering torches, the only sources of light reflecting across four tense faces. Harsh words crackle the air between them as they argue about their course. Some wanting to return, some wanting to continue. They move step by step, care, step by careful step through the dank cave. I really like the word dank in this. Noses pinched and eyes alert when a ghostly elven woman is thrown into the air and onto the ground with a sudden snap, a victim of an tra unseen trap. <laughs> Just like me. The group is surrounded now, skeletal hands reaching from beyond the grave at the intrusion of life in their midst. The group shambles for their weapons, or scrambles for their weapons, but too late. The skeletons are already upon them. A fallen elf cracks her eyes open. One of her companions fall, about to be impaled by an ancient spear. Adrenaline floods her system and she screams into action. She just screams into action. Nothing else. Moving faster than anyone, just unconscious has has a right to. Eyes white with fear, she conjures a wall of fire and sittering the skeleton and providing a momentary reprieve for the party. Breathing hard, they share a glance at the as the passage is flooded with a flickering orange and ready their weapons. This time they are ready and the skeletons last mere minutes before falling to the ground once more. This elder of yours. Whoa. He may have returned a drunk or an invalid. Maybe. But the search for Persok is just as important as what I find. Is that right? And what if you return empty-handed, huh? I never return empty-handed. Grizzled bastard, stop being a dick. You see a young woman standing against the backdrop of a wide, grassy plain. Her face is all silver and shadow in the moonlight, and she looks down at the wooden raft at her feet. An older woman lies on the raft, her arms crossed over her chest and her eyes closed in death. Her face is the same dark gray as the younger woman's, and her head bears the same curving proturbances. But that's where the resemblance ends. The younger woman takes a pendant from the older woman's neck and ties it around her own. The platinum medallion shows a crescent moon engulfed by a curling wave, the symbol of the goddess Andra. The young woman pushes from the raft from the grassy beach and into the tide. She stands at the surf and watches it disappear, a silvered tear rolling down her cheek. Eh? Eh? <laughs> Prize fighter's gap tooth smile. <laughs> That's a weird way to describe a roof. <laughs> but okay. Huh. Hello. Lay in low. Hello. Oh boy, it's a secret torture room. Painfully scratchy. Ugh, hammer and chisel. Murky with blood. Slow and silent. Okay, well, secret secret torture house. That's great. <laughs> Sailor, hick. Courtesan, hick. I'm all open for business. <laughs> oh my god, that guy's name. K. Where's the man? Another fucked up torch. Time to see and not be seen. Alright, what story time does this goat man have for us? Oh, maybe he's not a goat man, he just has a helm. You see a body on a bench, a team of mages and healers buzzing around the room, shutting instructions and incantations. A pulsating crystalline device lies in the body's chest cavity, streaming slightly in the ma magically cooled room. The healers stitch the skin as a priest murmurs healing germs. Finally, it is done. The body is whole again. The mages gather for a final enchantment as the others watch a complicated ritual that has them sweating rivulets. A hush follows 
over the room as the body shudders, electricity arcing from side to side, eyes fluttering open. For a moment, he's there, but something is wrong. He goes to scream, and he's gone. The room is silent as they trail out, overcome, but something stays, not quite tangible, and shouts wordlessly as it sees its own body for the first time. Hmm. That's unfortunate. That water. Bugs. What are you looking at? Get out of my face! Shove off, nothing to talk about. Got nothing to say to you. What you looking at? Okay. See a young man contort screaming strapped to a wooden table. Above him, a machine crackles, tiny strikes of lightning caressing his emaciated frame. A trio of mages chant around him, eyes white, hands lifted in benediction to their agonized victim. It goes on for more time than he could say before the screams stop, replaced by a horse stabbing sobs in silence. A silver-haired woman enters, kissing him on the forehead, motherly hands soothing, cajoling. He quiets, unable to speak for screaming, and waits for a death he'll never see. Alrighty then, Mr... Brian Walker. Yeah. You see a dark, foreboding room, heavily with incense smoke. Two figures stand in the center of the room, performing some sort of ritual with slow, exact, deliberate motions. This man follows along with the actions of an older man, and it comes obvious the older man is teaching the younger one how to perform the ritual. He calls out steps, corrects the imperfections, and berates the young man when he missteps. Watching the younger man's motions, you note that he seems to be intentionally making mistakes, but what he hopes to accomplish with this you can't discern. As the ritual continues, the master becomes more irritated with the young man. He walks over, leans in, and begins chat begins chastising him eye to eye. This appears to be what the young man was waiting for. The young man takes advantage of his master's distraction, dropping the sensor he is holding, and locks eyes with the older man, completely focused on his target. A wisp of energy leaps from the younger eyes to the older, and the master stands up, eyes now milky white, rocking unsteadily on his feet. The young man never breaks his gaze on the older, slowly circling him. Almost seeming disappointed, he stops toe-to-toe -to -toe and looks disdainfully into his blank eyes. Is that it? He whispers, staring at his master down like a snake. How did I ever think you had anything to offer me? He blinks and twists his head side to side, turning his heel and striding from the room. Bright blue mist flows from the master's eyes and mouth, wrapping sinuous tendrils around his body. It slides across his arms, working his way to his abdomen down over his legs. The mist speeds up, moving faster as it circles the master's body, glowing brighter as it does. The speed increases until it no longer looks like a mist but a shimmering cocoon surrounding the old man's body. A faint humming buzz and emanates from the mist, growing louder and more forceful by the second. The young man stops in the doorway, looking back at the older man, only a mild interest in his eyes. With a whoosh, the air around his master ignites, starting him on fire. <laughs> the smell of his own burning flesh breaks him from his reverie and scream erupts from his lungs. The young man turns around again and unmoved and walks away, leaving no one to hear his master's dying cry. Hmm. You're all such good people. Souls. Ooh, a lighthouse. But is there a man and a woman? Man and a girl in a lighthouse? I mean, there always is. Now hiring builders, no experience needed. Good day, stranger. As you approach, she ginger in eagerly turns you. You interested in doing some construction work? Her clothes are simple but nicer than most you've seen in Andre's gift. Pays good money. I take it you have trouble finding workers. Workers who aren't superstitious crowds anyways. She shakes her head. I have her good coin, but as soon as I tell them about the job, they say an oath to the Lady of Lemon and spit over the dock. They all think the lighthouse is haunted, ever since the floods of Andra's gift. Echoes of the war. The floods certainly claimed enough souls to pack a lighthouse to bursting. Andra's gift was flooded. 
Back at the end of the War of Defiance, it was one of the finishing blows to the Adiran military. Cost us a lot, though. The whole district was supposed to be evacuated, but not everyone left in time. The Adirans put anyone they found to the sword. The lucky ones who escaped the slaughter drowned hours later when Hadrit's forces broke the dams. Locals say the lighthouse keeper was one of the people who stayed behind and one of the last to die. She shrugs. I don't know why that makes the lighthouse any more haunted than the rest of the gift, but there you have it. Have you gone inside? Who, me? <laughs> Not exactly. See, my health is rather delicate and all that dust. <sighs> all right, when I saw two of my deckhands running as fast as they could down the pier, I lost my nerve too. I could take a look. Good, about time someone put an end to this foolishness. She rummages in her pocket and pulls out a skeleton key and she hands it to you. She hesitates. Just be careful. Not that I believe in ghost stories, but it's an old building, so watch your step. I have questions. Do you know what might be inside the lighthouse? If only. It's been inhabited since they flooded Andra's gift. What are you building? An inn, allegedly. She brushes a single loose strand of her bun behind her ear. She's not wearing her hair in a bun. The gift needs a spot with a little more class than the salty mast. There's a district. This district has been in the dump since the War of Defiance, and it seems ready for some fresh development. So imagine my excitement when I find this place three floors tall and right on the water, for sale at a reasonable price. The seller suggests that there are other interested buyers, so I had to close the deal before I'd taken time to really look into it. Stupid, she shakes her head. Being from New Hamer, I knew about the floods, but I didn't know about the superstitions surrounding the lighthouse, and the seller was long gone by the time I found out. At this point, it'll be a miracle from the Lady of Lament herself if I make it my investment back. <sighs> she already told me about that. You're not from Defiance Bay, are you? <laughs> what gave it away? The accent or the fact that I was a dupe who paid good coin for this place? I'm from New Hamar, on the northern coast. It's smaller than Divine Space, so I came here hoping for some fresh opportunities and maybe the chance to do a little good in this neighborhood. Yeah. The Wailing Banshee. Sounds exciting. She's just gonna wander off now. We'll she has got her work cut out for her. Nice. Sounds exciting. Let's go inside. I'm like the first person to die in a horror movie. Ooh, let's go check it out. I leveled up by walking through the door. Quickly and quietly. Well, I might as well hey. level up. because I want more mechanics. Um, athletics probably would be a good thing to get to. Okay. Body attunement. I now have tier four. Excellent. Silence, scream, wild leech, pain block. Okay, body attunement. Cypher probes the mind and soul of the enemy target. Finding the strength of defense is stealing them for our own. Cool. Pales the target with a lance of pure force, inflicting major pierce damage to anyone in the line of attack with a high chance of causing an interrupt. That could be useful. Provides an ally with a mental block on his or her pain, granting a bonus to their damage reduction and regenerating endurance over time. That sounds pretty good to me, too. Produces a psychic howl in the targeted area, stunning the target as well as dealing raw damage to all enemies within... Nice, I like that one. Watches onto some characteristic of the target psyche and drains it, granting the same amount as a bonus to the saper. Affects a random attribute. I like these two. And then number nineteen. <laughs> He's like a Viking with a freaking door shield. Also the uh handhold. For it is not where you'd expect it to be. That looks really messed up, actually. I don't understand how this works. Anyway. Let's increase his survival. And sure. Uh, 
feel like we could just carry over those points to the next one. All right, what do we got here? Vigorous defense. Fighter becomes fiercely determined to deflect all incoming blows, dramatically increasing all defenses for a short time. I think I might do that. We'll see what else we got. Fighter lunges through the battle, pulling an enemy into immediate melee range, causing pierce damage, but leaving them dazed. Oh, sweet. So if he's, like, not next to someone, he could just kind of, like, stab someone across the room. Uh, sweeps the fighter melee weapon in a large arc, knocking enemies prone and causing crush damage. That's pretty useful, too. Okay. Fighter draws strength from his or her own indomitable spirit, causing them to regenerate 50% of endurance lost from an attack. Is this passive? Oh, three per rest, I see. And it's instant. Yeah, well, that's like, what, the first... I guess if you activate it, maybe. So either the defense or the spinning one. It's like a new stance. Let's do that one. Level seven. Sweet. Mm -hmm. Sweet. I mm -hmm. can do my level tier three stuff pretty much immediately. Sweet. I can do that one outside of um, combat if I wanted mm -hmm. to. Might be able to, like, raise my base. <gasps> Holy shit! <laughs> I wasn't ready for that. I was in the middle of, like, a thought, and it just... Yeah. That was great. Oh no! Oh no! Okay, who has the... interrupt stun thing? God damn it. I need to look at my journal for a second. <laughs> uh, specters. I want to know what they're... Or shades or shadows or whatever. Phantom. Do I not have specter? Maybe it's phantoms. Okay, um, let's dominate that guy. This is gonna go very poorly for me, I can already tell. Try my new gun. Actually, uh, shoot, I don't want people to be attacking the guy that I'm trying to dominate. Spirits. How bad? I was about to turn to the right, but okay, it's on my side, so yeah. Okay. Oh, I don't want the specters, fuck. Suddenly. 
Also, my ears ringing. That's not a good sign. How are we doing over here? Who are you even attacking right now? Keep attacking these guys because I don't like their stunning. I don't. I can't knock down a freaking. I can hit all of them, which is pretty cool. That's a, that's a sickness thing, isn't it? Yeah. Someone's shooting a shit ton of stuff. I think... Oh, I... Knocked them prone? There's a lot of dudes. We're gonna have to. What? I don't know what's happening. Try to summon some skeletons back right there. Vibrations. Oh god. Someone is stunned. And now there's like skeletons everywhere. Something is happening. I at least have flanking ability now. Okay, I have the ability to turn somebody. Something happened. Probably that prone thing. Didn't work. The puppy. Loth, I need you to do me a favor and just keep it. No! Someone screamed no and I'm not sure why. Maybe she failed. Something's happening. Where are you? Oh, you're back there. That's not going to be very useful. Trouble, friend. <laughs> Where are you? You're so. He's in trouble. Yeah, 
this so long, but yeah. Uh, I get a good shot at this. Oh, okay, I'm like, did someone just die? Looks like the priest is dead. Hmm. Yeah. Ah. Okay. Barnacles reaching almost to the ceiling. Okay. What if the barrels and crates are swollen and warped as if by water? They're mad about it. Greater rain blight. It's a domesticated. I'm like, ah. Uh. This isn't work. Yes, shoot the rain. Someone just. Just beat up this thing now. Let's go. Someone is immune to something. And I'm not exactly sure what. A bunch of people leveled up. Primal water. All right, what do you got? Stealth would be good. Mechanics would also be good. Attack and reload the map. Cool. Neat. That would be useful too. Hmm. Let's do that. She needs to do some more damage. Let's see what we can give you. Bonus versus creature type is nice. Iron skin. I need some more damage stuff, I think. Three free third or lower level spells from the target. Spell list. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna do that. Neat. 
concussive missiles. Nice. Huh. Ooh, confusion. The area of effect. Increasing your lore, why not? And you get these canned spells. Eh? Mm. Oh, yes. That is what I need. Nice. Cool. I can probably set that up as like a trap type thing. I should try using a trap in battle just mm -hmm. to see. Because I have a couple quick yeah. traps set. 